decisions. It all comes down to decisions. And we tend to make decisions with very short-term horizons uh, in, in mind. And we're and too many of the times it's we're reacting to what's happening around us. Mm -hmm. If you look at life or, or you 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 look at with that perspective, you know, how am I going to end up? Where is this going at, to 80? Uh, it's a very different conversation. Mm -hmm. Very different conversation. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast, where our mission is to share business ideas, practices, and strategies while we enjoy our cup of coffee. Today's guest is Stuart Roberts. He's got a new book out called Visibility, Playing to Win the Game of Life. And he is going to be talking a little bit about some of his struggles uh, through his career and how he kind of hit a, a brick wall of struggles and frustrations and how he wasn't taking care of himself and how he had to create some routine and some structure to be able to uh, move to the next phase of his life. I think there's a lot of call to actions out of this conversation, especially for me. I've taken some notes, but I think for all of us, it, whatever realm you're in, whatever position that you're in, he's talking a lot to fathers and to business owners, to entrepreneurs, but it really applies to anybody that has a job and has responsibilities. I think you can take lessons from this and starting now, uh, fundamentals and foundations that can impact your life for the long term. Pretty excited about this conversation. Before we get to it, though, I do want to invite you to subscribe. If you haven't already, you can do that by subscribing on whatever platform you're hearing this podcast on. Just click on the subscribe button. Or if you're watching this on video, Facebook, YouTube, maybe you followed a link from LinkedIn, we ask you to subscribe or follow us on whatever platform you're watching this on. We have a brand new episode that comes out every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And we want you to be a part of that. Don't miss out on a single one of those. We've been doing this for over three and a half years. So there's lots of episodes out there for you to check out. You can scroll through that as well by checking us out at lockdoc.net slash podcast. Grab a cup of coffee and get ready for this conversation. We got so much to say. We got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. Oh yeah. Well, Stuart, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you, Chad. Excited to be here. Uh, so, so all the way from San Diego, California, which yes, indeed. I know Glenn Younger will most likely be hearing this and he lives in San Diego as well. I asked you earlier if you knew him because Glenn knows everybody, uh, but I'll send you his address and you can go check him, uh, go visit him and introduce, introduce yourself to him because uh, he's a, he's a solid upstanding individual. Love to meet those. All right. Well, uh, as you know, we're doing rapid fire, five randomly selected questions just to get under your skin with unknown point values, and then we will give you a score at the end. Are you ready? I hope so. We'll see. All right. you know, one of the things, before we jump into it, side note, because I've been on this kick lately of watching Doug DeMiro videos. Are you familiar with Doug DeMiro? I am not. No. Okay. Well, you got to check him out. Doug DeMiro does car reviews. So he any oh. car review out there, and then he gives it a Doug score at the end. So I am considering changing it. Uh, to giving it a Chad score at the end, but we're not quite there yet. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number one. What is something that you own that you have actually never used? Oh, my gosh. Um, my bike. My bike. I got a bike last year, and I, I do most of my biking at the gym on the spin. So I have yet to use it. It's it's on my list. So you got a, like a stationary bike or an actual bicycle that you would ride on the street? Well, I have a, a bicycle that I would ride in the street oh. and I picked it up during COVID, but I've been, been using the one at the gym and, and just kind of, kind of into that groove. There you go. Well, that is, Shh, uh, don't tell my wife. <laughs> That's very, it was, it was a birthday gift. Oh, well, that was nice. Yeah. Lovely. So, Love it. I just put it over there in the corner. Uh, all right. Next question. Number two, if you had an extra hour a day that had to be allocated for one specific purpose, what would you do with it? Oh my gosh. I would say quality time with my wife. Uh, we are running hard and fast and she's the CFO of a startup and I'm wrote the book and, and I'm, I'm marketing it and working on my website. And we've got two kids in the mix. It is a challenge to get time alone. And I covet that. All right. That was very good. That makes up for the not using your bicycle for the birthday present. <laughs> Question number three, if you were to devote your life to art, what type of art would it be? Oh my gosh. I'm, um, 
I love art. I'm, in fact, I'm, uh, I, I would say impressionist art. Um, I'm, I, we've gone to Art Basel in Miami on a couple of times, and uh, I think it's, it, leads so, it lends so much to, to life. I would say if I, if I could have had a, a prayer of a talent, which I don't, it would be in painting impressionist art. Okay. Educate me. What is impressionist art? So think of uh, Van Gogh, Matisse, Renoir. Okay. Um, so these were artists that painted uh, the heyday was the late 18th century, 1870s, 1880s. Um, Van Gogh, thick brush strokes. Mm-hmm. It gives you an impression of what it is up close, but you really have to step back. I mean, you get into the Syrahs where he painted with dots. And uh, if you're looking at it up close, the famous scene was in the movie um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off where they're looking at the paintings. It's in the Chicago Museum of Art and he's right on top of it and you can't see anything, but then you back up 20 feet and it, it makes sense. Gotcha. As, uh, we have, uh, we were talking about this before we got started, but we've got a five-year-old and he, uh, as he's been learning to write his name in preschool and all that stuff, he, uh, he, he writes his name with big strokes. And I'm like, this kid is going to be some type of a painter. Cause I mean, the, the way that he holds the pen and, and writes his name is very intriguing. There you go. Put a brush in his hand, see what he can do. <laughs> I'm just afraid that we'll be painting the house. So I'm going <laughs> to hold off on that just yet. All right. Question number four. Uh, this is something funny that uh, we talk about around our house quite frequently. How long do you think you could survive on your own? Oh my gosh, I'd be dead. <laughs> my wife and I joke about that. She says, why would you be on your own? I'd say lonely and miserable. <laughs> well, it's also like what life skills do you have outside of like being able to, to use a digital device? If everything just stopped, it would like you got to figure out how to grow your own food and all these types of things. I think it'd be really good for a week or so. And then after that, I think I'd, I'd fail miserably. <laughs> I'd, I'd be great for a week or, or so if I could go back home every night. All right. right. <laughs> uh, question number five. Uh, what is something that you find mildly annoying, but not annoying enough to do anything about it? <sighs> We've got a puppy in the house. And uh, it wasn't planned, but... Uh, but uh, the the barking or, or yipping at at five a.m., uh, four four a.m., three a.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, needing to go out. Of of course, I uh, I had to get up and take her out. But mm-hmm. uh, but that was a joke for a couple of years in our family that we needed a dog, and I said no, we don't need a dog because I I knew I'd be taking care of it. And here we are. But anyway, you do these things for your kids, right? <laughs> we so. we have a dog. I take care of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> is that how that works in your family? Pretty much, yeah. pretty much. Funny story. We, uh, my, uh, we had been talking about my wife had been talking about this with with my youngest daughter, my mm-hmm. eight year old Ariana, for a long time, and she wanted a dog. She wanted a dog. You know, the traditional. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to be there for it. And we're come. We live right on the border of Mexico. Yep. And we, uh, my dentist is down there. And we were we were coming back from from Mexico, and I got in the wrong line. Usually we walk across the border, but I drove. And we got in the wrong line and every vendor is hawking everything from tequila to tamales to, you guessed it, puppies. And this guy comes over and he's got a big dog puppy and a little dog puppy and the window goes down. And before I know it, the dog is on my daughter's lap and everyone's looking at me. Can we get it, daddy? Can we get it? I'm thinking, what are you talking about? We're, we're going away for two weeks. There's no way we can't do this. And so the line's moving at a glacial pace. Mm-hmm. And so the guy's gone. I, sh- I shoo him off and windows go up. And my wife and my daughter are looking at me like, you know, we got to do this, right? We got to. And so within about 10 minutes, my wife takes all the cash that we have and she's running down the, <laughs> the causeway looking for this guy and the puppy to buy the puppy. So anyway, that's how it went down. But uh, we're, uh, we're, it's, it's a, it, it's going to work out. It's uh, it's it was meant to be. There, there you go. So, what kind of puppy is it? It's a Maltese poo. Okay. Which I didn't even know what that was. It's it's basically a toy poodle and a Maltese. Mm-hmm. So small dogs. Your your cat could probably beat them up, but uh, uh, it's you know sees the, the pride and joy of our house as of late. So I'm now I'm now not fifth in line. I'm sixth in line behind the the cats and the dog. So uh, I know my place. That's that's great. Um, there's so many funny things to talk about with uh, puppies and the fact that you got one on the side of the road in Mexico. But 
uh, we'll probably move along and get into the, the conversation. We'll give you a, a, a score of 799. Congratulations. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. So Stuart Roberts, uh, talk to us a little bit about, uh, I mean, that work-life balance, that that struggle that that business owners have that a lot of people have maybe it's not even just business owners but the the struggle that we have of why it's so difficult to put down what we're uh, or I guess is probably what shuffling our priorities right is is that what you're kind of seeing when it comes to when it comes to that balance well let me let me give you the the short definition is or the short answer here is that society values the monetary accomplishments mm-hmm. so without i mean it's it's everywhere we're inundated with this Who's got the nicer car, the mm-hmm. bigger home? Who is more successful? And that's how it's valued. A little, little bit of context here. I grew up in the Midwest, middle-class kid in a wealthy neighborhood. And all I saw around me was everyone had more than we did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was in terms of, of cars and homes and, and vacations, elaborate vacations. And so I grew up with a mindset that I was going to be successful. And what that meant was I was going to make money. Mm-hmm. And money was going to give me options. It was going to give me access to you know, a beautiful wife. Then I was going to have beautiful children in the big house. And so this is what we, you know, subconsciously, we're taught this from a very early age. And in the back of our mind, we know, no, money's not going to bring happiness. Mm-hmm. But still, we want it, right? So I set off college, went to Wall Street to make money, worked for a large uh, global investment bank, did an MBA, and then um, took off for China. And I started my own trading company. And ran that for a number of years, and I made money. Mm-hmm. Um, I found myself in 2015. We had bought our dream home. Uh, I had beautiful wife. We had two two uh, toddlers in the house, and my life was falling apart. Mm-hmm. It was it was miserable. Um, I was angry. My wife wanted a divorce, and it was my life was imploding as I knew it. Mm-hmm. And so this was the impetus for the book and for what we're talking about here today, I realized that despite my education, despite my success in career, that I didn't have the tools that I needed to truly be successful in life. And, uh, and so you get back to balance. And, and in the book, I argue that there are five core areas which incorporate success. Mm-hmm. There's self-health, it's something I call inner peace, which is essentially mental health, family, marriage, and, and trade. It's a shift model. Shift is the acronym. Mm-hmm. And so what I do now, and, and, and the, challenge is we, we, the challenge is we get married, we have kids, and our workload and our responsibility load just continues to grow, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Where, and, and you can only get up so early in the morning, mm-hmm. right? But you, that, that responsibility grows, and pretty soon you forget yourself, you forget your health, and you argue that you don't have time. Well, this catches up with us. And I would say the, 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 one, of the, one of the biggest challenges is that we don't schedule things that are important. Most of us are really good about scheduling mm-hmm. our work. We're scheduling meetings. We schedule this call. Mm-hmm. But we don't schedule necessarily time with the kids. Mm-hmm. We don't schedule uh, date night with our wife. We don't schedule uh, the gym or that's the first to go out the window when we lose time because we just, we just don't have time. So... So that was the, the position where I found myself in, in 2015. I was overweight. I was out of shape. Mm-hmm. Mentally, I, I wasn't on the right track. And uh, it, was, uh, it, it was, you know, life as I knew it was imploding. So I had a very similar type situation. Um, but I, I would say it was back in 20, probably 20. Uh, 11, 2011, 2012 ish. It was somewhere around there. Similar situation, just up early in the morning, work, 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 late at night, poor health, all of those things, like really in a bad situation, on edge with everything. Um, and it was definitely a, a bad time in life, was never where I was supposed to be because I did not have a clear path or a clear plan. It was just staying busy, right? Um, so, <laughs> but it wasn't in the same situation where where you were, where it was just gobs of success, right? So, the this this a flip side of it was just working yourself to death and also being uh, d- d- uh, treating yourself poorly. So, when you're talking to people about this, you're talking to uh, folks with that have that are working through effectively just creating balance, regardless of wherever they're at in life, because 
I, and I, I'm trying to process this as, as you just told that story because I'm, I'm, it's very eye opening. But it, it's not always for people that have had, that have seen a high level of success. It is probably related to putting in those fundamentals and structure now, regardless. Like, don't wait till it's to the point of 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 almost failure, right? Well, we're, we're human, right? It's human nature to wait until till uh, something uh, cataclysmic is happening before we mm-hmm. we course correct, right? But that's my that's my message here. That's why I'm, I, I wrote the book, and that's why I'm talking about this because it is so important. I have seen, you know, we just spent uh, Thanksgiving with uh, family, my parents, mm-hmm. 85 and 86. I've seen the end of life. Sure. They're in their last stage of life. And I've seen how short it is. And I, I have this, this thing I do with my, uh, this 80th birthday scenario. Where am I going to be at my 80th birthday? If I'm lucky, if I'm fortunate enough to, to make it there, um, you know, how are people going to perceive me? Mm-hmm. How are my colleagues? What, what do they, what do they say about me? Mm-hmm. What do my kids, my grown kids have to say about me? What is my wife? Is she, you know, is she still there with me? Mm-hmm. Um, and these are all things that I think about. Who, who am I? Mm-hmm. Because pretty much at that stage, if we're lucky enough to make it to 80, the die has been cast, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. There's no, you know, redo. And so that gives us a chance when you have that conversation of what areas do I need to course correct? And it comes across in these, these five core buckets, you know, we, and, and we can't do everything every day. It's impossible, mm-hmm. right? I'm, I'm not here to tell you that I put in a 20 hour day and, and um, I'm, I got everything. I've I've arrived at where I am Mm -hmm. and everything's fixed and set. No, it's a constant process. It's a constant growth curve. And you're, you're continually, you know, basically competing with where you were last year. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, it's, you're competing with yourself Mm -hmm. and that's how you measure, measure improvement and success. Yeah. The, the 80th birthday thing is an interesting test. I'm thinking about that. And my grandfather is, is in that age of, of life. And, and it's exactly what you said. It's the, the die has been cast. It's you're talking legacy. Now you're not talking about what is to come or where you are currently. You're, you're only reflecting back on, on your life at that point. And it changes, um, kind of, I guess if, if you can start thinking about that now and that's what you're building towards, then you make different decisions along the way, you know, at, Absolutely. at, at 80, you don't want to be thinking about, well, you know, well, I don't have anything or anybody because I, because all of my focus was here. So Chad, you've touched on something there with decisions. It all comes down to decisions. And we tend to make decisions with very short term horizons, uh, in, in mind. And we're, and too many of the times it's, we're reacting to what's happening around us. Mm -hmm. If you look at life or or you, 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 you look at with that perspective, you know, how am I going to end up? Where's this going to 80? Uh, It's a very different conversation, Mm -hmm. very different conversation. Well, it it goes back to what the, to, to start with the end in mind. Um, That's, that's been a common conversation that that we've had recently with a lot of folks is you can create a path by starting with the end in mind. Where do I want things to be? And I think that's a a very valid question at 80. And then how, what has to be true in order to get there? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm 51 and uh, it's taken me a long time to figure this out. And, And from a very humble place, I'm hoping that this the book is going to save people a lot of time and a lot of heartache from from having to learn everything the hard way like i did we understand the frustrations hoa board members and property managers face when deciding the best solution for their hoa and pool security should we use a keypad hand out keys or install a key card system do we even need cameras these are some of the questions that are difficult to navigate and we're here to help At LockDock Security, we've spent over 20 years working with homeowners associations and property managers to find the system that best fits the pool and HOA needs. Camera systems for the front gate or front entrance, key card systems for the pool gates, or simply updating the gate so that it meets safety and code compliance. We like to take the guesswork out of the process to answer any questions and help find the right solution. Our mission is to help you protect your people and your property and that includes pools. Contact our team today to schedule your free consultation for your community. So your book is called Visibility, Playing to Win the Game of Life. Um, And there you go. There's a 
a copy of it right there. Uh, you can obviously see that on your website, stuartroberts.com. And what I'm interested in, because you've, you've got your shift um, acronym of uh, working through that. Is that what it's called? Is it called an acronym? When you have the letters that have words associated with it, is that what it's called? I think that's what it is. Oh, okay. Anyways, um, so you've got that. So, so walk me through that. How do you, how do you, how are you coaching people? And maybe, you know, through the, through the book, how are you coaching people on keeping that in balance? Cause you said just a few moments ago, you can't do all of those things every day. So what is, how, Maybe I'm speaking just from my own perspective. A lot of times uh, in my world, things are very hyper focused. So, okay, I want to I want to focus on health. So we're hyper focused on health, and everything else can can go uh, go off the cliff. Uh, how are you helping to to find structure on balance? So it it, um, it it starts with attending to these five core areas. Um, you know, every week. So f- so focus on the week here. Okay. okay. So right. so for example. Uh, when well, I mean, we're all, we're all live, we have a very short time, uh, of in, in the day, it goes by very quickly. We're fathers, we're providers, we're, uh, we're parents, we're, we're husbands and we're, we're wives, spouses. Um, and, and, and again, again, scheduling this is key. So I start my morning. I have a very specific, I'm someone who hates routine, by the way, <laughs> I hate routine, routine spells boredom to me, yep. but over the years I've trained myself to start my day when possible, uh, the same place. So I'm up at five 15, the alarm goes off. And, um, you know, for those of you who aren't used to getting up earlier, the key is you don't lose an hour of sleep. You, you go to bed a little bit earlier, right? So, cause you, you never want to shortchange your sleep. So I'm up and I, I head to the gym mm-hmm. first thing in the morning and, uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm on a bike and I'm doing 50 miles a week. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's high intensity interval training. And then Saturdays it's, it's yoga. And then I've got some core mixed in there as well. So, so health is, is huge, huge. And, and it, again, it, it, it took me, I, I was broken in my early forties, terrible back problems, lifting the kids mm-hmm. and I didn't get it. But if your health is in place, it allows you to show up for every area of your life. Mm-hmm whether it be, you know, working a 10, 12 hour day and coming home and, and jumping on the trampoline with the kids, mm-hmm. whether it be, you know, having the energy and the time for your wife. So, so your health is at a cornerstone of this. And as we age, it becomes even more and more important. Um, so the health is what I attend to right away. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I've got this whole routine. The book goes into that. I'll, I'll spare you the details, but there's some coconut, there's some coconut oil, oil pulling, there's a meditation, um, huge believer in meditation. Mm-hmm. And that's something that, that we get into the mental health. That's mm-hmm. another bucket. Um, it's so important that you take time for yourself and you, you do what I, I like to call self-care and invest in that every day. Because otherwise, you're getting up, you're rolling out of bed, you're grabbing your phone. And right away, you just get lost in the laundry list of responsibilities and to-do list. Mm-hmm. And and then with, with that, and, and I was there as well. And, and the problem with that is that you find yourself in a zone where you're reacting mm-hmm. to what's happening around you because it's, things are happening so fast, you're not prepared. So meditation gives you that stability. Um, your exercise gives you that stability. And then it's, um, it's making time also for yourself as a father and a professional and, um, and, a, and a husband. Time is, is again, is, is really limited. Mm-hmm. And so what I do... Every month, I've got a group that we get together here in San Diego with, and it's it's twelve men, uh, and we get together and we break bread, we we eat, and we have a topic, and then we connect. So if you're not doing that, whether you be and, and our wives, are, for, quite frankly, are way ahead of us on this. Uh, they've been they've been doing this a lot longer than we have. But for men, it's more difficult. I found. But if you schedule it, it's the second Tuesday of the month, every month, and we rotate homes. Whoever can show up shows up. It's a great way to connect outside mm-hmm. of your, your marriage and as a father or as a parent. Hmm. Uh, very important that we're connecting with other people. And, and then and the book goes into a lot of detail in, in each of these, these categories. And then and finally, work. I mean, we're, this is an area where, where most of us are better at when it comes to scheduling mm-hmm. and executing. Right. There's a there's there's a um, a process that we have. We have people we work with, people that count on us. 
And But we're accountable on that front, but we're not so accountable on the other fronts. So my mantra is, let's get you accountable on these other fronts. And, and there's, a, there's a way to discipline way to do that. So let's talk about that a little bit, because I... I'm, I'll, I'll speak from my personal experience. I'm a very focused individual on my calendar. My calendar is a thing. Uh, but I will also admittedly, and I, I'm hesitant to admit this a little bit, but I will also admittedly say that there are certain categories of things that go on the calendar that don't matter. And then there are certain category of things that do matter. Um, say, for instance, this, this recording today on my calendar, and I knew about it, and I was here for it. Like, it it mattered. I, I made sure that things were prepared, and I was on time for it. And there's a lot of other things. We have a an all-team uh, meeting here every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. I'm always here for that, early, prepared, and ready to go. We have daily stand-ups at 9 a.m. I am always prepared and ready to go for those things. Those They're non-negotiables. What I'm trying to figure out is how do I make <laughs> those other things non-negotiable? Because it feels like, and I'm just talking through this out loud, and maybe I'm the only person that ever has to deal with this, but uh, struggling with the the other components to say, how can I, and that's what kind of what you just were re- uh, alluding to, is holding myself accountable to make those things non-negotiable. Well, you're, you're spot on. Um, yeah, I mean, we all struggle with this. And, and it's, it's just where you prioritize your time. Um, I really value my time with, with my kids. Mm-hmm. I really value my time with my wife. I look at, let's, I, I talked a little bit about my father. He's 85. Um, he has been retired for 20 some years, mm-hmm. right? When, when I think of my father, okay, he, he won some awards for advertising in, in Northeast in Ohio in, in the seventies and eighties, but that's not what defines him. Mm-hmm. What defines this man is the relationship he had, the family he built, Mm -hmm. myself, my sisters, um, the person he was, and that's way outside of career. And so, so give yourself a little bit more perspective in terms of, and then you can see, you can see the importance of, okay. Um, you know, I, I alluded to problems I ran in, in life imploding in 2015. Well, it was because I didn't take the time to invest and feed those areas that were important in life because I was too busy. Sure. I, w- I was too busy. So, so back to your point, you, I know that if I've got a date on the calendar with my wife, I'm accountable for that. Mm-hmm. And if something comes up and I can't do it, I don't just, we don't just cancel it. We reschedule, mm-hmm. but we, we structure our time. For example, we do, you know, we're, we're both leading uh, really busy lives and sometimes during the week, it's very hard to connect. One of the things we like to do is we go to happy hour on Friday night, just the two of us. Mm-hmm. And there's a little uh, pizza place or there's a, a sushi place that overlooks the, the ocean. And we sit there and, and have a glass of wine and, and pizza or a sushi roll. Mm-hmm. And we spend that time. That's our time. And, and I don't, and you know, if, if there's a, uh, this time of year, there's a lot of other events that come up, but I don't take that for granted mm-hmm. because it's it's really important. Vacations are really important. It's really important to to get away, get out of, outside of your your daily routine with your family and with your wife. That's a great way to to reconnect. Um, well, and, and I I don't disagree with any of those things. And I'm I'm just I want to prod in on that a little bit. Is I I agree with what you're saying from some of the conversations that I've had with people in the past and including myself is how do you, because those seem to be the things that are negotiable or the things that, uh, that have a little bit more flexibility or we as a perspective, or I'll just say myself at times will deprioritize how, how, what is the mindset shift to say these are as this event on a calendar or, you know, this, whatever particular situation is as high priority as, you know, as the business meeting or as whatever thing that, that you would not let other people down for, uh, how, where, what, what causes us to get in that, in that mindset or that position? So I'll even get more specific. Let's say, you know, the, the workout, the gym is the first thing to go out the window. Sure right? You didn't get enough sleep the night before. Maybe you had a few drinks with some friends. And so you're going to take the, you're going to take the Monday morning workout off the table, right? Mm-hmm. I used to do this all the time, or you're traveling or you have a mm-hmm. legitimate excuse. Something's come up. Your daughter, ha- your, your daughter, or your son has a uh, soccer or volleyball 
event and mm-hmm. you got to go to that and you, and you, you just, you, you, it, or something comes up at work. So what I would do is when that would happen, I would force myself to make up the workout on the weekends. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I got to a point where on some Saturdays, gosh, I had to do, I had to show up for three workouts. I had to do, you know, bike and then uh, high intensity interval training and then yoga all in one day mm. and, you know, brutal stuff, right? Well, now I do it as a rut- routine sure. because I like it and it feeds my body. It, it gives me the energy, yeah. but it, it's things like that where you hold yourself accountable. You're accountable for your time. I'm accountable for even the, the food I'm, I'm, I'm indulging in. The other night we had a, a party or event and we were eating pizza at, uh, you know, eight, nine, eight thirty at night. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that the next day mm-hmm. I'm accountable for that. And so now I have those conversations with myself. Well, gee, I, I know that if I eat this or, or if I drink this, which I do on occasion, I'm not saying, you know, you shouldn't do that, but, but I'm going to suffer. There's going to be consequences for this action later. And sometimes you say, um, sure, let's do it. Like we, we did a cruise over the holidays and, uh, and, you know, the food is just egregious, seven, nine course meals, and you're just really indulging. So going into this, I knew that I want to indulge and I, I'm not going to, you know, pass on that, but I knew what I was, was facing and I prepared. And then, you know, now since being home, I'm two meals a day. Yeah. Right. Um, so you, you, you have to be accountable to yourself as just as you would to your work, to your wife and, and to your kids. Yeah. Can you copy this key? That's a question we get asked about 3,422 times a year. And how can you actually be sure that the person who asked that question is supposed to get a copy of that key? Well, we think you should always know who can copy your keys to your business and your home because it could be your neighbor, an old employee, a contractor, or even worse, your mother-in-law. At LockDock Security, we believe in protected key systems, so you always know who has a copy of your key. To find out more, visit LockDoc.net or stop by our Charlotte location. LockDoc Security, helping you protect your people and your property. I'm very intrigued by this. I think it's a, a huge call to action because I think the, the alternative of this is you choose to get a hold of it and get it fixed. And, and as we discussed earlier, as we mentioned earlier, is a lot of times this this isn't really a thought or this isn't something that you even really pay attention to until it's you're in the midst of it, right? Until there's that that catastrophic failure or that that situation. Um, but it's a call to action to start thinking about it now because I think the alternative of that is it's catastrophic failure. People quit. They just say, I can't take it anymore. And they just basically do a hard reset on life, you know, change career. Uh, it's just maybe they lose their family. Or they just totally reset everything. And then, uh, and then they start back from scratch and then they find themselves in that same situation, five, 10, 15 years down the road, because they are repeating the same behaviors. It just is, it's the, the time of, uh, the building over the, over the years versus actually identifying the, the fundamentals and, and making a huge change on that. Absolutely. I mean, what are the consequences of a shortened life? What are the consequences if if you, you don't take care of your body and you're not taking care of your health? Well, it's a shortened lifespan. Mm-hmm. And I know I want to be there for my my daughter's weddings. Mm-hmm. I want to be there when when they have children. Um, you know, and, and nothing nothing is worth sacrificing that. And I and it's and it's it's you know, I've experienced, I guess my uh, reality check here is that I've experienced those really low lows mm-hmm. where you know, life was imploding Mm -hmm. and you go through that and you realize that you don't ever want to be there again. Yeah. So, you know, that's my reality check. You know, your back being out, I would go to the doctors and the doctors would prescribe uh, anti-inflammatory and pain medicine when all I need to do is go to the gym and and strengthen my core. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, no doctor told me that. No, it was rounds of therapy and meds and, you know, when, you know, we don't, and typically we, we, you know, we go to the gym in our twenties or when we're in our teens and we want to look good. We want to feel good. Right. And for men that translates into, to weights. Mm-hmm. And as we age, we get into our, you know, thirties, forties, and fifties, we're going to do much more to keep up. Mm-hmm. And you, you keep that core strong. The core is everything, your core and weights are great. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot more to it in terms of flexibility and, and just whole full physical health. Uh, and, and being around, not only do I want to be around for a while, but I want to be healthy and enjoy it. Yeah. No, it's, it is a, a definite reality check, a call to action. And, and, 
um, and start to, to, I guess, have some self-awareness of it. And that's probably where a lot of this comes comes from. Uh, before we started the conversation, uh, we were talking about the rapid fire questions and how and you said you, you don't like going into situations where you're not well prepared, right? Uh, you, you like to know kind of what's getting ready to happen. Um, and I think from a, from a personality perspective, there's some people that really need to have a structured plan. And there's a lot of people that run from a structured plan. You also mentioned that you don't like that, that you oftentimes run from the rigidity, you know, having that, uh, that process, but that's one of the things that helps keep you balanced and helps keep you disciplined. Uh, so I think a, a lot of it, from my perspective, what I'm hearing you say is one, identify and kind of get a real good check of, of yourself, what makes you tick. So some self-awareness and then start to craft the, the structure and the plan around that. So you can offset your, your, I guess, human and shortcomings. Well, let, let me qualify that statement. And okay. I apologize for the confusion that, so my day starts and the routine is very, it, it's very much the same. So it's, it's the gym first thing in the morning. It's coming back home to uh, my daughters and I are under this, uh, making crepes and waffles in the morning. So we do that. And then it's getting them off to school at eight mm-hmm. quick shower. Uh, I do a cold shower and then get them, get them off to school, drop them off. Uh, at 8 a.m. And sometimes it's back to the gym for a core class or something else, or it's home. Like today, for example, I, I missed that because of, because of our talk. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the day gets, the day alters from there. After the, after I t- attend to my health and, um, and the kids and the meditation, that's really the, the most stable part of my morning. My morning is really stable. And then from there, it, it changes drama- dramatically, mm-hmm. depending on the day. So, and what I'm doing now, there's so much of it is so new that, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's exciting. And as an entrepreneur, we can relate to that. We like that. We gravitate towards that. Mm-hmm. Now, most of us don't want to work a job where we're doing the same thing eight, 10 hours a day. And I understand that. And I'm not, I'm not advocating doing that. I'm saying, but the routine can be immensely helpful first sure. thing. So Saturday morning, um, I know what I'm doing mm-hmm. for the most part, you know, unless we're out of town. I know what I'm doing. And it's also a great way to connect with your, with your spouse. Yeah. We both go to the gym or we do a beach walk mm-hmm. when, when the weather is nice. Okay. And, and it's the same thing with, with meals. I know what I'm eating for, for lunch next, you know, next Tuesday. I know what I'm eating a month from now. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. My breakfast and my lunch are very, very similar. So I can, can manage my, my uh, food intake and my, my diet or fuel, as I like to call it. Yeah. I hate the word diet. Um, and, you know, and that may sound interesting, that may sound boring to some, but heck, I, you know, I, we did a, a week long cruise where we had incredible food mm-hmm. and I indulged in all those things and I enjoyed it because I don't indulge every day or every week. So uh, this may be a sidetrack conversation, but you just said something interesting. So you, you have your meals planned out for how long? I mean, it's, it's boring, Chad. It's, it's, it's Monday <laughs> stuff. I'm, I'm down. I do two meals a day. Yeah, I do. I've got this, uh this vegetable smoothie uh, concoction that, Mm -hmm. that, you know, some days tastes good, some days not so good. Um, But it's, it's, it's something that you you don't even have to think about it anymore because it's just, it's already planned. No, I do. I mean, I, we do intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I usually, usually stop eating at at 6 PM at night. Mm -hmm. um, And then I don't eat the next day till about 10 Mm AM. And, you know, that might sound radical for some, but it's just now it's, it's, it's habit. Yeah. And, uh, and then my breakfast, I, I'm into this thing of earning your breakfast, mm-hmm. right? I go to the gym in the morning and I've burned 500 calories before I've put any food in my body, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to earn that, that food. And then breakfast consists of, you know, protein oatmeal, not the stuff you buy at the, at the store, um, which sh- no sugar, you know, high protein content yep. oatmeal, and, uh, and then midday it's, uh, it's my fruit, a uh, little bit of fruit for, for flavor and, and mostly vegetable smoothie. And, uh, and then at night we, we have, we our diet is, is, uh, varies. So, um, and I don't want to dive too much into the, the diet thing or get too sidetracked on it, but I think that there's something fundamental there. So that's, you've got a, you've got a structure and a plan for that. And that's, that it clicks away. Previous, you said you were in bad health and you were, you do with all Talk, talk to me about your meal planning then. Oh, there, there was no plan. As I said, I would get up. You know, I'll give you a sense of my, my schedule when we had when the kids were first born. And we, my, and my wife and I married late. We planned all of this. Mm-hmm. We thought, you know, we're going to be really smart. I got married at 37. We had our first child at 30, 
nine. We had live in at the time. We had uh, an au pair who was going to, you know, everything was planned out. Right. And I, I was, I was going to take care of everything, Chad. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're, you're looking at me about to laugh because you know how ridiculous that sounds. Right. Especially when you have a little, little child in the house. Mm-hmm. So I was, uh, I would get up and of course I had been up late. So I hit the snooze button and then I was you know grabbing some breakfast and coffee and rushing off to work. I'd work a, an eight, 10 hour day. Um, when the, when the, our first, our firstborn was, was came, I would wanted to make sure I was home in time to make dinner. Mm -hmm. And so that was around six and I'd make some food and my wife was done, Mm -hmm. right? She'd go to bed. And then, you know, I would typically find myself at, at, on a Tuesday night or a Thursday night, cleaning up the kitchen Mm -hmm. at nine 30, 10 o'clock at night thinking what the, you know, (laughs) what's going on here. And then of course, then you're exhausted Mm because you've worked two jobs Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I'd go upstairs and, and I was watching, remember I was watching Breaking Bad mm-hmm. at the time and I'd sit there and pour myself a scotch because I wanted to relax. Mm-hmm. Right. And I would drink a scotch and watch one show. And then, you know, you can't watch just one. So I'd watch another one and you got to pour myself another drink. And sometimes they were doubles. And so, you know, you get into that habit and you, you're, if you're living like that on a Tuesday night, <laughs> you're waking up on a Wednesday and you're, you're hurt. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just, there's no, and, and then I was angry about it because I couldn't keep up Yeah, and, and I was medicating with the alcohol and, and I'm not, I'm not preaching. Don't drink. I sure. enjoy, enjoy by being like, like most of us. Um, but you know, I can't do that on a Monday through, through Friday or mm-hmm. Thursday every night. I just, I, I can't live that way. Yeah. No, it, well, I I think there's correlation to it, and that's the reason I was asking. Is you know, um, so goes that, and, and we've we've uh, had a a uh, a little uh, phrase around here that's gotten thrown around recently of how you do anything is how you do everything, and yes. um, a lot of what you're what you've been talking about over the last you know twenty thirty minutes or so correlates to that. You have decided how I do anything is how I do everything, and so. If I want to have some discipline and structure, I have to do that in all areas of my life so that it gives me the ability to do the things that I want to do, you know, uh, and, and I, that may sound a little bit crazy, but that's just kind of what I'm hearing you say is because previously a lot of things were just kind of um, unstructured and so things could get out of hand very easily. Now you've kind of brought some structure in because you wanted to have the freedom to do the things that you enjoy. Is that, am I on to, to what you're talking absolutely. about? Absolutely. I'm not saying live a Spartan life <laughs> where, where you don't eat and don't drink and, and you know, you're in bed every night by seven. No, mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's not what I'm preaching at all. I'm saying choose where you want to indulge. For example, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I love sugar. Mm-hmm. I love sugar. I like chocolate. Uh, one of my weaknesses is chocolate covered pretzels. We'll buy them at Trader Joe's. And, uh, you know, I love that. I'm not going to deprive myself of that, but I'm not going to sit there and eat a whole bag. Sure. Uh, you know, I'm going to have two or three with, with, uh, with, uh, my, my coffee or, or tea. And, um, you know, so you, you learn to, you learn to what's important Yeah. and you learn to choose. And for example, you know, I grew up in the Midwest. My whole idea of, of protein was synonymous with, with animal protein. And I love a steak, um, love to indulge in that, but I don't do that every week. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just, you know, my cholesterol can't handle. So yes, you choose your battles and you decide, and I I apologize. I'm touching on a lot of different uh, hot buttons here, maybe, but, (laughs) but, um, you know, you, you, I think I find that I appreciate those things more when I don't do it every day. Mm -hmm. I don't indulge every day. Well, I, I'll tell you something, Stuart. I'm, it, this is this is a very eye opening. I, I like some of the structure that you've uh, they've put in place here. I mean, there, I know obviously you you have a book written on this based off of your experiences, and I know there's other resources out there as well that really talk about this. And all of that is great. Now it's up to us to actually implement it, right? Put it put it in action. Um, so, and, and you've got a you've got a, a simple structure to be able to do that, or at least uh, to to help give give some check boxes here of things that we need to focus on. Some of the interesting takeaways that um, that I'm that I'm drawing from this from the notes that I took was uh, one making sure that you have a, a a community group to connect with something that's outside of 
you know, your job and outside of your family, some, some people, you said you had a group of men that you connect with on a, on a monthly Absolutely. basis. That, that is something I think that's vital. Um, and at times in life, when you have that, you see the benefits of it. And then at times, you know, through seasons, you, you move away from it. Um, that's a, that's a good call to action. And then really focusing on making a schedule matter, um, in the same sense that if you were going to miss a meeting, with a client, you would reschedule it. Um, the same should hold true for every other aspect of your life. If it's uh, if it's your your workout routine, your date nights, or your your time with your kids, and making sure that you're you're making time for it and making that matter. I think those are really some interesting takeaways that I've gotten from today. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. The, you, you again. You go back to the the group. I can't I can't stress how important this has been. How instrumental this has been in my life. Surround yourself. Find a group of men who you admire. Uh, put it together yourself, invite them over for dinner and tell them what you want to do. Say, I want to meet once a month and I want to learn from you. Mm -hmm. We as as men have a tendency to to get together and we we love to talk about our accomplishments, right? Mm -hmm. But you get a group of of men together who are accomplished and who you admire. And I guarantee you, they have a side to them that you've never seen. Mm -hmm. And once you start to, you know, peel back those layers and you really get to know that person, uh, you know, these are incredible bonds of form that you're going to have for forever. And, and men in particular, we, we struggle with this because we're too busy, right? We're too busy, but you get it on the calendar, second Tuesday of the month, you host the first one mm-hmm. and, you know, get three or four men together or, or three or four women, depending on your sex and, and make it happen. Make time for yourself, make time to build those relationships. Because if you are not there as a whole person and you're not satisfying yourself, you can't show up yeah. for your kids and for your wife and at work. Yeah. You just can't continue that trajectory and be selfless. Very good advice, Stuart. I appreciate it. You can find out more uh, and, and check out your book as well, stuartroberts.com. And that's the alternate version of Stuart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T, not <laughs> S-T-U-A-R-T, um, like the the road name that we that our office is on. But uh, very thank cool. You, hey, Stuart, thank you very much again for the conversation today. Very valuable advice and uh, great to connect with you. Go check out Glenn. Make sure you introduce yourself as well. Those of you who are watching or listening for the first time, make sure you subscribe. We want you to be ready for the next episode that's going to be coming out next Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. So don't miss that. Hit the subscribe button on the platform you're listening to or wherever you're watching this. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time right here on the Coffee Break Podcast.